Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. We hear from the superintendent of the Dallas ISD team involved in a shooting here in San Antonio, what he had to say about the incident. The Russian military is stepping up their attacks and Ukraine's president says Moscow is deliberately attacking an evacuation point. More from Ukraine is straight ahead. We're in the 60s with some showers here or there this morning, but grab that winter coat and take it with you. You can thank us later. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday. It is March 11th. We've made it to Friday. We have and big changes in store. Today is another big weather change day. Ah, oh, yesterday was nice, but yeah. now it's going to be cold in a few hours, Mike. It is, and it's actually moving in here a little bit quicker. So I think by uh, six, seven o'clock, we're going to start to see temperatures, and they are just going to drop off and stay cold. Then. So this so. is the warmest we're going to be all day, yep. and then we're yeah. done. Yeah, don't let it fool you right now <laughs> that it's warm and humid out there, because yeah, like Mark was talking about, take a coat this morning. Is you will definitely need it by later on today. Lots of clouds out there, and yes, we do have a couple of uh, showers. Notice how everything is kind of sliding up to the north. So we're going to be getting this cold air coming down here at the surface, but then the rain is going to sort of overrun it a little bit. So we'll keep a lot of clouds around. We'll keep some showers around, primarily up through roughly noon or so, and then it'll start to uh, taper off. Uh, you know, a decent shower here and there. A couple of wet spots on the roads, and a few more out there in portions of the hill country. Temperatures right now, everybody is very warm upper 50s low 60s sort of in the metropolitan area out toward Kerrville go a little further out to the northwest and uh, we've got well first of all humidity is still very high as well but then 46 at Fredericksburg Junction 41 and Ozona right now is at 34 degrees so all this colder air will continue to move in here in the next couple of hours and the wind is also going to be picking up already 17 mile per hour winds these are sustained winds at Fredericksburg Junction at 12 and we're going to be seeing wind gusts 30, 35, close to 40 miles per hour later on uh, this afternoon. Everything is on the low side, but there's a whole bunch of allergens out there. And as far as the forecast this morning, I think by 7 o'clock, we're already down about 10 degrees, and then we'll continue to, to drop down and stay right around 40 or so, perhaps rebound slightly, about 42 later on this afternoon, and it will be very windy, like I said. Also, there's a wind advisory that goes into effect for just about all of the area from noon up until midnight. Then skies clear out, winds kind of slacking off a little bit, and we see another freeze both mornings this weekend. But beautiful days. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Alicia, Mark. Thank you, Mike. And this morning's top stories, we now know the gun used in a shooting at a Northside ISD property involved a Dallas ISD basketball team, and that gun allegedly belonged to one of the players. The Dallas ISD superintendent held a press conference yesterday afternoon and confirmed the gun belonged to a member of the Dallas Kimball basketball team. It's still unclear if the shooting was on purpose or accidental. The superintendent said he spoke with the University Interscholastic League, or UIL, and the team is being allowed to remain in the state tournament. There are no excuses for this, and we can't um, talk our way into things that we behave ourselves into. Michael Inojosa also says the woman who was shot was a student trainer on the team. He says she's out of surgery and heading back to Dallas with her family. This morning, Crime Stoppers wants to know if you can identify a man wanted a connection to a robbery. Take a look at your screen. According to SAPD, the man entered the ABC Food Mart in the 1200 block of East Highland Boulevard on Wednesday. Officers say the suspect pointed a gun at the store clerk demanding money from the register. Once the suspect had the money, he left the store in a small SUV. Anyone who has any information is asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number is 210-224-STOP. 90%. That's the percentage of customers in the Seguin and McQueen area that have had their gas service restored. Good news, but the other 10% are expected to have their service back online sometime today. And as you can imagine, customers of Centerpoint Energy are, of course, relieved. Thousands of homes and businesses in that area had their natural gas service cut earlier this week when a pipeline was damaged. That damaged gas line has been fixed, and the company and company officials are hoping to have service restored to all of its customers today as soon as possible. Russian troops close in on the Ukrainian capital of Kyiv, pushing three miles closer despite stiff resistance from Ukrainian fighters across the country. Russian forces are stepping up their attacks, though U.S. officials say their progress is still slower than expected. This as President Biden prepares to put more economic pressure on Russia. 
ABC's M. Wynn has the latest from Washington. This morning, Russian troops inching closer to the capital, Kyiv. Now roughly nine miles away from city center, according to a senior U.S. defense official. New video released by the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense shows Russian forces ambushed as they drive towards the outskirts of Kyiv. Ukrainians claiming two commanders were killed, though not yet verified. Thursday, around 60,000 civilians fled Ukraine through humanitarian corridors. But evacuation routes in Mariupol, where a maternity and children's hospital was recently bombed, remained blocked. Ukrainian President Zelensky accusing Russia of not allowing those civilians to be saved, saying, That's a day they have a clear order to hold Mariupol hostage to torture it. Already more than 2.3 million people have fled the country. In Poland, Vice President Harris embracing calls for an international war crimes investigation of Russia. We have been witnessing for weeks and certainly just in the last 24 hours atrocities of unimaginable proportion. President Biden set to deliver remarks today calling for the U.S., along with the G7 and European Union, to strip Russia of its most favored nation trading status, essentially ending normal trade relations and allowing the White House to increase tariffs on Russian goods. Ukraine will never, never be a victory for Putin. Top U.S. intelligence officials are warning that Russia's false claims of chemical weapons in Ukraine could be used as an excuse for their own attack using bioweapons. The White House would not say how the U.S. would react if Russia ultimately did use them. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. 436 for now at 61 degrees. Everybody's feeling the squeeze at the pump straight ahead. What people are doing to save more money. The Cole High School Cougars could make history as they find themselves back in the hunt for a state championship. Highlights from their latest win is coming up next. And taking a look outside this I-10 West at Loop 410, things are looking clear for now. Roads are wet in some spots, folks. Uh, taking a live look outside with live cam right now. Bundle up for later on. You don't need that jacket now, but we promise you will need it by us this afternoon. We'll be right back. In morning sports at 440, looking to make history. The Cole Cougars are on pace to be back to back state champs. They first had to get by Hitchcock in the 3A state semifinals at the Alma Dome. Cougars couldn't get off to a better start. Silas Livingston in the corner three to help Cole jump out to a 15 0 lead. Trey Blackmore knocks down a step back three and it's 19 5 after one. Dre Ray spins baseline for the layup. The Cougs are up 28-13 halftime. Third quarter, Ray drops the hammer, drives down the lane, throws down a monster jam over two defenders. Cole up nine going into the fourth. Bulldogs got close in that period, but the Cougars hit their free throws down the stretch and punched their ticket to the championship game Saturday, the final 53-49. Came out fast, came out um, getting up, you know, shooting, shooting really well. Um, and after that, uh, you know, teams are going to get runs throughout the um, game. So, I mean, we just, know, we just had to know how to uh, battle back. I think the experience that we had in the past has helped us a lot. You know, just playing in big games and big atmosphere, I feel like having that experience really helped us stay together and composed as a team. Champion Chargers looking for their trip to the state finals in Class 5A, but the Chargers going to have to go through Mansfield Timberview. Chargers set the tone early. Charlie... Uh, George Gorgelos causes a turnover. Braden Baum scoops up the loose ball, takes it all the way back for an early lead. More defense into offense. It's Baum this time creating the turnover, and Braxton Burdick puts it up and in. Champion up 13 11 after one. Outside shooting gets going in the second. Baum from behind the arc keeps the charges and lean. Then Jesse Pert knocks down a three. Timberview takes the lead 28 25 right before the half and the Chargers season unfortunately comes to an end 55 43. All right UIL basketball tournament continues today with boys state semifinals. Bernie taking on Wichita Falls Hershey today at three this Saturday. Cole will play Dallas Madison at 10 o'clock in the morning. And Spurs fans, this is a reminder of Silver and Black back on the court tonight. They are taking on the Utah Jazz at the AT&T Center. Tonight's tip off 7 o'clock. And of course, tonight is the night that if Coach Pop gets a victory, we'll officially break the all-time winningest coach record for the NBA. Cross our fingers, right? Fingers crossed All for our some history. Yes, ma'am. Time right now, 442, 61 degrees.
And still ahead, a look at the latest star-studded streaming, streaming series starring Samuel L. Jackson. And many of us are wondering how high will gas prices really go? A look at the dramatic increase we're seeing at the pumps across San Antonio. It's 445. Welcome back. The British government has sanctioned seven Russian oligarchs, including the owner of the Chelsea soccer team. ABC's Andrew Jimbert has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, putting the pressure on even more Russian oligarchs. Operations at one of the most famous soccer clubs in the world, Chelsea, blocked. The club can't sell new tickets, merchandise, or even buy and sell players. The reason? It's owned by this man, Roman Abramovich, currently worth more than $12 billion. The UK government sanctioning him, calling him a prominent Russian businessman and pro-Kremlin oligarch who has a close relationship with Putin, something he denies. London is host to so much Russian wealth. So for the UK, even to take any steps towards sanctioning Russian oligarchs is really uh, a case of biting the hand that feeds them. And we'll have much more on the hunt for oligarch wealth coming up at 7 a.m., plus the very latest on the ground reporting from Ukraine. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. 446, every time we pass a gas station now, we are bracing for the prices we're going to see. $4 a gallon. That is now the average price for gasoline here in Texas, according to AAA. And now we're setting records locally. We're just under the $4 mark here. This past week, we've seen the steepest climb ever. We've definitely felt it up 60 cents a gallon. Mm. Consumer reporter Marilyn Moritz shows us everybody's feeling the squeeze. Spanish fries. John DeLeon runs a small business, Star Catering. He's delivering lunch. Problem is, gas prices are eating his. His truck guzzled more than 100 bucks yesterday, and his two catering vans. On the vans, it was like 35. Now it's 80, 90 bucks to fill up. And being on the road is his business. Not only that, but as the gas goes up, so does all the commodities. Meat, poultry, you name it, he's already had to raise his prices, adding fuel surcharges. I just can't keep on doing it because they don't have to order from me. Luis Morales feels his pain. He just stocked up on groceries for his small taco shop. Oh, and the gas, $81 to feed his truck. Too much. And it's affecting commuters just trying to get to work. Take a look, 16 gallons, $67. If you have a 15-gallon tank, it is now costing you nearly $10 more to fill up compared to just last week. It's getting ridiculous. Michael Martinez and his wife both commute yeah, to work. Well, now it's about 100 bucks a piece, just going back and forth. How long can you do that? Not that long. Not at these prices. Here's math that will sting your wallet. If you get 25 miles to the gallon, gas is costing you nearly a dollar for every six miles you drive. How high prices will go is hard to predict with oil prices volatile, and it all comes as demand for gas is revving up. As for De Leon, he got through the pandemic. He expects to navigate high fuel prices, too. Eventually, hopefully things will change. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Of course, the expectation is gas prices are not going down anytime soon, so brace yourselves, folks. All right, Transcad right now, 410 at Cherry Ridge. The rain has not been widespread, but you can see right there the pavement is wet on the freeway at 410, and there's 281 at Grayson, not quite as damp. Just kind of depends on where you are. Did you see any sprinkles coming in this morning? Not at all, but I don't live far from downtown. I was coming in from Alamo Rancheri this morning, and the sprinkles lasted all of a, a whopping four seconds, I think, <laughs> Mike. <clears throat> Yeah, and that's no going to be the washes. case. It's going to be very, very light rain, uh, just mm -hmm. enough to make the roads, you know, kind of damp and kind of slippery. Most of it's going to be confined to kind of the first half of the day up to roughly noon. So a couple of spots where you might have a more of just a couple of sprinkles out there, we'll put it that way. Yesterday was absolutely gorgeous. Then late in the day, of course, clouds started to move on in here. And yes, that made for some gorgeous drama. Uh, what were you saying, Mark? This looks like the movie Empire of the, the Sun. Yeah, one of Christian Bale's first movies. Um, yeah, gorgeous. Very reminiscent. Very pretty picture. Thank you very much for that. All right, we're not going to be seeing any good sun rises this morning. Sunset may be out to the west later on today. Lots of clouds hanging around here. Very, very warm temperatures. But again, 
the story this morning is don't let the current temperature fool you. Take a coat because you will definitely need it. Humidity is also pretty high. You notice that when you step outside. And as a matter of fact, these dew points have gone up 20, 25, 30 degrees compared to this time yesterday. But that drier air is moving on in here. And look at how temperatures drop down. Kerrville 59, 44, Fredericksburg 41 junction. So that colder air, and it looks like timing is, is sped up somewhat. So thinking by about uh, in the next hour, two hours, when that front moves on through here, temperatures will drop down and then really drop down and pretty much stay. Now this model has us into the uh, kind of upper 30s, which is a possibility here in town and definitely mid and even lower 30s this afternoon out in portions of the hill country. Skies clear out tonight, then it really gets cold. I'm going for 30 here in town. Again, some models have us even colder than that. A good hard freeze in parts of the hill country by tomorrow morning, and then we hit freeze again by Sunday morning. Scattered light showers around the area uh, this morning. Not, it's not really going to amount to too awfully much. Yes, there may be, as I call it, a little chunky rain up there in parts of the hill country, northern parts of the hill country, which would be more of a, a gee whiz than anything, just because of some colder air aloft, and it's not going like it's not going to anything and then most of that rain continues to end by about midday. We start to clear out especially to the west and with those clear skies that's going to allow those temperatures to really drop down later on tonight. And yeah, it's another batch of brutally cold air up there. Zero Bismarck. And look at some of these wind chill temperatures right now. Eight below Denver, 23 below in Bismarck, North Dakota. So for today, temperatures are going to be dropping down. We are at in the low 60s right now by noon right around 40. I think there may be a slight rebound here and there. Uh, 42 later on this afternoon, but it's going to be very windy. It's going to feel much colder than that. Winds are going to be gusting to about, oh gosh, 35, uh, 40 miles per hour. We also have the wind advisory that goes into effect at noon up until midnight. 30 tomorrow morning, double that, 60. Beautiful weekend, great afternoons, cold mornings though. And then it all shifts the other direction. Mid upper 70s, low 80s, plenty of sunshine. Back to spring next week. Yeah, look at that. 80 degrees by Thursday. Mm -hmm. I just can't believe it's going to be that cold. But don't be fooled. Grab that coat. Oh, yes, indeed. Thank you, Mike. Right now, 452. We're at 61 degrees. And this weekend, a lot of families are going to turn red. We have your look at the new Pixar film, Turning Red. It makes its debut. It looks adorable. Let's take a look at your lottery numbers this morning, starting off with pick three, one, two, one, Fireball eight. Your daily four number, seven, nine, four, one, Fireball six. Cash five, two, seven, twenty, thirty, two, thirty three. And then your Texas two step numbers, twelve, seventeen, twenty eight, thirty one. Is it Fireball thirty one? Uh, bonus ball. Bonus ball yes, thirty one. 4.55 this Friday morning. Now for the latest on what's happening in Hollywood. Here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. This is going to be the best year ever. A lot of families are going to turn red this weekend. The new Pixar film Turning Red makes its debut. The story of a Chinese-Canadian girl named May hitting puberty, which causes her to turn into a giant red panda when she gets emotional. <laughs> Sandra O oh plays May's mom, and she hopes it'll allow parents and children a way to communicate about tough topics. If a child doesn't have the words for it, and if they've seen it, maybe they can say, without being able to explain it, I'm having a panda moment. I'm pandaing out, you know, just leave me alone. Turning Red is out now on Disney+. Plus. I got a lot of things to do, and I need my memory to do it. The Last Days of Ptolemy Gray is the latest star-studded streaming series. Samuel L. Jackson plays a man losing his memory and his life. Dominique Fishback's character steps in to save him and herself in the process. She tells me it evokes strong memories of caring for and losing her grandmother 10 years ago. When I saw this and saw that this character was going to be the caretaker of this man, when everybody else kind of uh, left him alone, left him to rot, I thought that that was really empowering. Based on the Walter Mosley novel, The Last Days of Ptolemy Gray debuts today on Apple TV+. Also new today, Ryan Reynolds, Jennifer Garner, and more star in the sci-fi action adventure The Atom Project on Netflix. And Sunday, it's the Critics' Choice Awards and the BAFTAs, the British equivalent of the Oscars. And wishing a happy and prank-free birthday today to Johnny Knoxville. The Jackass star is 51. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles.
It's now three minutes till 60 degrees. Let's play ball. Major League Baseball reaches a deal, and yes, they will have a full season. The details are coming up later in GMSA. And coming up top of the hour, new information on a wrong way crash on San Antonio's northeast side that claimed the life of a man. And taking a look out at the roads, I-35 at Alamo, things are moving along swiftly, nicely. <laughs> we'll be back with more. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Police make an arrest in the case of shooting death of a two-year-old girl that happened last night. We have details coming up. Taking a live look outside with live cam. Don't be fooled, it is 61 degrees, but you're going to want to grab your coat before you head out the door. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday. It is March 11th, and we are going to forget that it's the month of March in a matter of hours. Yeah, spring doesn't feel like spring. Mike, winter, that last winter freeze. We go from spring to winter, and if you're looking forward to next week, that's going to be all spring. But we got to make it through today first because, yeah, it is going to be changing uh, very abruptly and very quickly. We're at 61, as we were talking about right now. A couple of showers are out there. Dew points at 56. There's a lot of humidity. Again, don't let that fool you. Take a heavy coat because temperatures are just going to be plummeting later on this morning and staying right around 40. That doesn't even factor in the wind, which the wind is really going to be howling today, so wind chills are going to be down there. The aquifer did go up three tenths of a foot, but don't forget, stage one water restrictions are in effect, and a lot of allergens out there. Everything is, though, on the light side. All right, take a look at what's going on right now on radar. We do have a few light showers around here. Everything's kind of sliding from south to north, sort of uh, wanting to overrun that, that cooler air, so if you get some of these showers as the front moves on through, it's just going to be adding to that that cold sneak down the back of your neck cold factor and uh, eh, most of it's just on the light side maybe a a little bit of a, a better shower here and there but this is not really going to amount to too much of anything temperatures right now in 61 here in town Kerrville has now dropped to 47 degrees and comforts at uh, 59 and then 39 junction freezing now in Ozona so the cold air continues to work its way down here fairly quickly the wind shifts around out of the north about 15 20 miles per hour and again we are going to have gusts upwards of about uh, 30 35 close to 40 miles per hour later on today once again allergens are on the uh, the light side and uh, this morning we are going to be uh, right around 50 as the front moves on through here and then we continue to drop down and get around 40 or so maybe rebound a couple of degrees and 42 later on this afternoon again with the wind in there that's going to make it feel like it's in the low 30s and upper 20s for wind chills we do have the wind advisory goes into effect at noon up until midnight still going to be breezy overnight but skies are going to clear out and the really cold air settles in here and so we're looking at a good freeze good hard freeze tomorrow morning but then beautiful afternoons for the weekend details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Good morning, sir. Happy Friday. Happy Is it Friday. Happy, happy on the roads? Happy on the roads. You know what, Mike? I realized I forgot my coat this morning, and then I got to work and realized I just left it here at the station. So, boy, did you luck out. I'm good. I lucked out here. It's, it's, it's a lucky Friday for me, and if you're a driver heading out of the roads, you're in luck. No issues just yet. The morning's still pretty quiet. 410 at New Braunfels. You can see not really anything to talk about this morning. However, there was an incident off of I-10 eastbound that did cause some delays for drivers. Nothing major because it was an overnight situation. A crash was reported, but thankfully things are looking okay from the most part here at Transguide. As seen right here on our map, 503, nothing to talk about at this time. There are some construction spots, but we're going to get to that a little bit later on in the newscast. Right now, if you are going to be traveling in the next few moments from any of these neighboring communities, I-10 eastbound 25 minutes to downtown San Antonio, 27 if you're coming in those southbound lanes from 281 and Bulverde, and 25 on 35 in those southbound lanes. Right now, no problems there, but we're going to watch the roads closely, and again, we'll have those construction spots coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Alicia. Thank you, sir. New details this morning following a head on vehicle crash on the city's. I believe it was northeast side that left one man dead and a woman hospitalized. San Antonio police have identified the driver of the vehicle that they say was driving on the wrong side of the road. Our Jonathan Cotto joins us live in the studio with the latest. Good morning, Jonathan. Give us an update.
Good morning, Alicia. Good morning, Mark. Well, this crash happened at the intersection of FM 78 and Lakeview Drive, not far from Ritterman Road in North Foster. Now, San Antonio Police Department have identified 29-year-old Arturo Sida as the driver of the car that was driving on the wrong side of the road when he collided with a woman driving another car. This happening Thursday morning just after 2 a.m., the woman was taken to Brook Army Medical Center with non-life-threatening injuries. The 29-year-old was pronounced dead at the scene. The San Antonio Fire Department, along with EMS, responded to the scene. Now, Mark, Alicia, police have yet to determine if alcohol was a factor in this crash. The investigation is ongoing. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. All right, we have an update this morning on a tragic shooting death of a toddler from last month. Earlier in the newscast, we mentioned it happened last night. It was last month. A man has been arrested in connection with the weapon used in that shooting. According to the U.S. Attorney's Office, two-year-old Jules Gonzalez shot herself with a gun owned by 32-year-old Christopher Ramirez. He was the boyfriend of the child's mother. When authorities searched his home, they say a duffel bag was found with a handgun. Ramirez isn't allowed to have a gun because he's a convicted felon. Back in February, police responded to a call on the southeast side and found the child with a gunshot wound to the head. If he's convicted in the shooting, he faces up to 10 years in prison. Police say a man has been arrested for his involvement in an armed carjacking. Authorities have identified the suspect as 18-year-old Andrew Cisneros. Investigators say Cisneros was involved in a crash last month, and while the victim was looking at the damage, several people, including Cisneros, got out of their vehicle and pointed a gun at the victim. Cisneros was later found in the stolen car with two other people. He's charged with aggravated robbery, but police say he did confess to several other robberies. Well, no one has to tell us. We know when it comes to time to pay for something. Uh, we know it's time to pay for something. Labor Department says inflation is up by 8%. That's the highest jump in 40 years. And it's the reason everything is more expensive. We asked how it's affecting tourism in San Antonio since it's a big part of the city's economy. Visit San Antonio's board chair says he's remaining optimistic. Well, based on past history, we do very, very well when the economy takes dives and, and, and goes the other way, shall we say. Groceries are up about 7%, plane tickets up close to 13%, and hotels as well as motels up 29%. As for gas, that's up at least 38%. In your morning headlines, the U.S. Senate passed a massive government funding bill Thursday that includes $13.6 billion in aid to Ukraine. The $1.5 trillion spending bill cleared the House Wednesday. Now it's headed to President Joe Biden's desk for his signature. Government funding is set to expire Friday, and lawmakers have been racing the clock to prevent a shutdown. The Senate also passed a stopgap measure to extend government funding through this coming Tuesday. That short-term extension gives congressional clerks time to process the larger bill before sending it to the president. Actor Kevin Spacey is being sued by a man accusing him of sexually assaulting him when he was a minor. That trial expected to begin in October. The man accusing Spacey says he met the actor while performing on Broadway in 1986 when he was 14 years old. He claims Spacey invited him to a party at his home where he allegedly groped him in a sexual manner. After the man made the allegation publicly in 2017, Spacey tweeted that he did not remember the incident, but offered an apology for what he says, quote, would have been deeply inappropriate drunken behavior. Well, Texas Senator Ted Cruz is sharing his support of a trucker convoy protesting COVID-19 restrictions. The Texas Republican posted this video and a message on Twitter yesterday. The video shows Cruz on a ride along with a truck that's part of the so-called People's Convoy. Convoy protested max, mask rather, and vaccine mandates in Washington, D.C. this week. They're calling for an end of the national emergency put in place by former President Trump in 2020 and extended by President Biden just last month. Well, players will head to spring training in Florida and Arizona today after the league and players agreed to end a 99-day lockout. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the details. Play ball. Major League Baseball is back. Major League Baseball's back, and we're going to play 162 games. MLB Commissioner Rob Manfred announcing Thursday the league's owners unanimously approved a five-year labor contract, ending the MLB lockout and salvaging a full 162-game season. I do want to start by apologizing to our fans. 
I know that the last few months have been difficult. There was a lot of uncertainty. Opening day, though, now set for April 7th, with free agency opening last night and spring training camps opening today. The lockout coming to an abrupt end after nearly 100 days of heated negotiations, with some wondering if a compromise would ever come. There was acrimony between the sides. It had gotten ugly enough to the point where players talked about possibly missing the entire season. And the new deal comes with some big changes. The playoffs will expand from 10 to 12 teams. The National League will now use designated hitters. And there's now a limit on the number of times players can be optioned to the minor leagues. The agreement will also increase pay for young players and better incentivize teams to compete. And it's not just the players who are back in business. For Tyrone Robinson, who owns a bar across from Yankee Stadium, relief. I literally cried. Very good day. Jumping for joy. Um, I'm excited to welcome the fans back. Uh, I'm excited to have my doors open. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, New York. 510 about 61 degrees. And a new theme park is in the works that is geared especially for Nintendo gamers. The details are in today's Tech Bite. A new offer by Peloton letting some consumers rent a bike, but only if you live in four particular states. That story ahead on GMSA. And let's take a look out with live cam. You guys, 61 degrees. It's going to get cold, bitterly cold and windy today. Be prepared. We'll have more details just ahead. In your morning consumer headlines this Friday, a new analysis by the Kayser Family Foundation shows nearly one in 10 adults or 23 million people owe at least $250 in medical bills. Of those, about 16 million people owe more than $1,000 and about 3 million people owe more than 10,000. This debt does not include medical bills that insurance providers will cover. According to the analysis, people 50 to 64 years old are most likely to owe money, but that number does go down when people hit the age of 65, as that's when they become eligible for coverage under Medicare. The total for health care related debt in the U.S. is estimated at one hundred and ninety five billion dollars. Eighty percent of all drivers surveyed said they would drive less to save on fuel due to high gas prices. A third of adult drivers under the age of 35 said they would be open to carpooling. Sixty eight percent of drivers over the age of 35 said they would rather save by combining errands. And 53 percent of older Americans said they would cut back on shopping or dining out to save money on gas. And have you wanted to put a Peloton in your home, but you're worried it's a bit too pricey? Well, why not rent one? Now you can. If you live in Texas, Florida, Minnesota, and Colorado, Peloton is trying something new, testing a rental plan where customers can rent a bike and get access to the streaming service for between 60 and 100 bucks a month. Peloton's new CEO is hoping the move could turn things around. Shares have plunged more than 80% from their high in January of 2021, there are also plans to overhaul the digital side of the bike and talk of making a simpler bike. 515, about 60 degrees. So it'll come a quick look at an award-winning documentary about 100-year-old Holocaust survivor who's sharing her story. But coming up, how Google is helping people in Ukraine find safety in the middle of a war. Ancestry made it really easy to learn about my family's history. Finding military information, newspaper articles, how many people were living in the house and where it was makes me curious and keeps pulling me in. And the photos reminding me of what life must have been like for them. Finding out new bits of information about the family has been a wonderful experience. It's an important part of understanding who we are. With Panera's You Pick 2, every meal is made fantastic. You can be fresh and fun, bold and classic, cozy and precocious. With 465 fresh, clean, craveable pairings, find a You Pick 2 for any mood. Enjoy a $1 delivery fee when you order on our app. I thought I was getting my floors clean, and then I learned my mop could be loaded with bacteria. So I got a Swiffer Wet Jet to get a cleaner clean. The spray breaks down dirt, and the pad absorbs it deep inside. Bye-bye. Try WetJet with a money-back guarantee. In today's Tech Bites, Google is planning to send air raid alerts directly to Android phones across Ukraine. The company announced that it is working with Ukrainian officials to launch the system to warn of incoming attacks. The Android pings will be based on official alerts sent by the government. 
Pop sockets have saved countless phones from falling out of your hands. Now comes a new one that can save you from a dead battery. The Pop Grip Jumpstart Lightning is actually a stick-on spare battery that can revive your phone when you're on the run. Finally, Nintendo will open its first theme park in the U.S. next year. Super Nintendo World will feature a ride and interactive area based on a Super Mario video game. A similar park already exists in Japan. The one here will be part of Universal Studios Hollywood. And we will all be kids again. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Imagine if we could get around town in Mario Karts. I know, right? <laughs> Collect uh, coins. Real quick, I'm going to ask our producer, what were you saying, Pachata? Okay, I think we're going to go to Steven as planned. Let's go to him now. Yes, just don't bump into anybody if you're going to be in one of those fast carts. Uh, but let's go ahead and get a look at traffic right now. Things are okay. Nothing too major on the roadways at this hour. But let's go ahead and just take you right to the map because there is one stall off of 410 Southbound and Marbach Road not causing issues. Check those vehicles. Quick drive up here does show some construction that will continue up until March 14th. Started on Tuesday. We'll wrap up around uh, 5 in the morning on Monday morning. Drivers expect the eastbound I-10 and uh, turnaround loop at 1604 ramp to be closed in the meantime, but wider look at the map shows we're in great shape, but hopefully weather's going to be shaping up to look a little nicer today, Mike. Don't know about that. Oh, because, okay. uh, things are definitely going to be changing. Speaking about not looking too nice, uh, this picture, yeah, lawns are looking pretty dry and praying for rain. We do have some rain out there this morning, but uh, anything will take it. It's not a whole heck of a lot, and there's not really a lot, if any, in the forecast beyond today. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Plenty of clouds out there. Don't let the current, and notice how it may be a little bit of a sheen on the road. We've had a few uh, light sprinkles so far this morning. The majority is in portions of the hill country right now, most of it on the light side. A couple of uh, decent showers here and there. And then we've got this one spot moving right through the east side of Bear County, heading in through uh, Converse. That's going to be heading up in toward Live Oak as well just uh, some scattered light stuff other than that. So temperatures right now, 61 in town. Kerrville was at 47. It's dropped down to 44 now, still 59 in comfort. So the front is continuing to work its way down in our direction. Should be moving through here in town. Um, Probably about seven o'clock, six, seven o'clock or so this morning, uh, and that's when temperatures will begin to drop down. We're 39 in junction, and the wind is out of the north at 18 right now in Kerrville, and we've got gusts on top of that. Wind advisory goes into effect at noon up until midnight because it will be gusting about uh, 30, 35, close to 40 miles per hour later on today. Here's the uh, this one particular computer model with temperatures, and it has us dropping down with the front moving through again about seven o'clock, and then temperatures really plummet when that thing comes on through. We'll drop down a good 15, 20 degrees, it's looking like, and then stay right around, say, upper 30s, 40 throughout the rest of the afternoon. It may fluctuate a, a couple of degrees here and there. And by then tomorrow morning, that's when we clear out tonight. We'll still have some windy conditions around, but temperatures are going to be dropping down. Good hard freeze in the hill country and right around 30, upper 20s here in town. Nice rebound, though, during the afternoon and wind chill temperatures. So once that front moves through, temperatures drop down, blustery winds, wind chills are going to be in the 30s and 20s, and that's going to be the situation throughout most all of the day. And then by tomorrow morning, we're still going to have enough of a breeze around here to put wind chill temperatures way down there. So yeah, it's going to be cold. Showers, a couple of them here and there. Rain, like I said, is not going to be a big deal this morning. And yes, there could be a slight bit of uh, some mix of some sleet up there in portions of the hill country. It's not going to be a big deal. Like I said, it's just going to be kind of a, a gee whiz type thing, and that would be the exception rather than the rule. And then most of that's going to be getting on out of here. The precipitation will be ending by roughly midday. We start to clear out, and then with the clearer skies, that's going to help allow temperatures to uh, really drop down by tomorrow morning. We're going to be down, again, right around 30 here in town. Good hard freeze in portions of the hill country. So if you have already planted some tender vegetation outside, you definitely want to cover it, especially in the hill country tonight. And not a bad idea even here in town. So 40 at noon. We are in the low 60s right now. Temperatures will be dropping down later on this morning. Windy conditions. Wind chill is going to be uh, subtract about 10 to 15 degrees off of that, and that's going to be the situation all day long. And again, temperatures may fluctuate a degree or two, but with those winds, it's still going to be just just cutting through you with that uh, wind chill. And then tomorrow morning down to 30, we rebound nicely. It's going to be a good looking weekend. Plenty of sunshine. We'll have more clouds, especially late on Sunday, but freezing tomorrow, freezing Sunday morning up into the 60s, and then 
just do a 180 spring returns next week mid upper 70s low 80s plenty of sunshine and again other than those few showers today no rain in the forecast which Thanks. is not good for lawns no i when i saw the picture i was like what am i looking at yeah, what yeah. should i be looking at i mean rain would help but uh, the, the yards more or less are still dormant right now from winter so mm -hmm. right but it, i mean those few little you know in my yard it's yeah. still kind of green but then there's those little brown patches that are yeah. popping up here and there so. yeah and of course any little shower will help with the wildflowers in oh, the upcoming true. season there thank you mike 524 about 60 degrees a Grammy, a Grammy winning metal band Ghost is leaving its mark on the NASCAR circuit. We'll tell you how after the break. I love to talk to people. I love to meet people. Mm. Whoever told you that I am old, look at me. I try to never talk about my suffering and fight for survival. Ella Blumenthal survived the Warsaw Ghetto and three concentration camps. The now 100-year-old Holocaust survivor tells her story in the award-winning documentary, I Am Here. Director Jordi Sank, who met Blumenthal when he was a teenager, sees the film as a vital history lesson. It's palatable for a much younger audience, and that younger audience is essential in continuing um, the legacy when there's no more survivors of of the Holocaust. I Am Here opens in U.S. theaters Friday. Ghost hits the track. The Grammy-winning metal band is the primary sponsor of NASCAR Infinity driver Bailey Curry's number four Chevrolet. The car debuts at Saturday's United Rentals 200 at Phoenix Raceway. Ghost's new album, Impera, is out Friday. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 528, 60 degrees. It's tax season. Find out why it could take a little longer to get your refund this year. Major crash involving four vehicles shut down I-10 at 410 for a while overnight. Live report is coming up after the break. A concert at Hemisphere Park is held to support the people of Ukraine through music. It's traffic troubles doubled. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Police say what started as a crash involving two suddenly doubled to four right before their eyes. I'll tell you more about it. Taking a live look outside with live cam, there are some spots of rain, but really you may be able to drive with your window down before we hit that cold front today. Big front on the way. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday, March 11th, and in Mike Osterhage's defense, he is taking every opportunity possible to warn everybody about what's going to happen today temperature-wise. Yes, indeed, because uh, if you are here in town and you think, well, it's 60, it's kind of humid out there, nah, no big deal, no, take a coat. Uh, because temperatures are going to be dropping down. As a matter of fact, out in portions of the hill country, we've already dropped down a good, uh, say, 15 degrees or so with that front moving on through. 61 right now, uh, fairly humid out there. The wind is out of the east for the time being. And we do have, as uh, Alicia was talking about, a couple of light little showers out there. Not really a, a big deal. Rain is unfortunately not going to be a big deal with this. A couple of moderate uh, you know, decent showers here and there, and that's the situation over there around Converse Live Oak, and this is going to be continuing to slide up to the north. So if you're going up uh, 35, you're going to run into just a couple of those showers, and the roads are damp in places because we have had some light little mist here and there. So 61 here in town, and then 44 in Kerrville. Just about an hour ago, it was right around, say, the low 50s, low to mid 50s in Kerrville. So the front has moved on through, and the winds are starting to shift around. 41 Fredericksburg, 39 in Junction. So all this cold air continues to work its way down in our direction and it's going to be in the next uh, hour and a half two hours as it moves on through here and as far as the wind north at 18 that's just the sustained winds that will have gusts on top of that and it's going to be gusty all day long about 30 35 miles per hour a lot of allergens out there at least everything is on the low side and uh, cold front showers windy and it's just going to stay kind of raw this afternoon wind chills are going to be down in the lower 30s 20s throughout the day and we'll have a lot of cloudy skies then we clear out tonight and really gets cold tomorrow morning a freeze good hard freeze in the hill country then sunny in 60s will freeze again on uh, sunday morning next week complete flip flop sunshine and warmer. It's going to be a return to spring. We do have a wind advisory goes into effect today at noon up until midnight for those blustery winds. So again, got to repeat. 
take a coat this morning. Even though you don't need it right now, you definitely will need it. Hitting the roads, traffic authority, Stephen Cavazos, any problems out there? Unfortunately, Mike, looks like we have some flashing lights here of I-37 at Pecan Valley. You can see no issues when it comes to those delays with traffic. Things are moving nice and easily through that spot, but we do have first responders that are out there working to clear this crashing, so make sure that you give them plenty of room if you have to drive through there. And if you have to head through 37, that crash has been picked up on I-37 northbound, again, right at Pecan Valley, not causing issues. The morning is still young, so but just be able to look out and be able to look out for this stall that's been picked up there off 410 southbound at Marbach Road. Wider look at the map at 534. We're not seeing any other issues that have been reported just yet, but the morning is still in the early part of it, so uh, we'll continue to watch roads closely. Thankfully, no delays if you're traveling in from I-10 westbound Seguin to downtown San Antonio. 87 coming in from Lavernia. Those northbound lanes are looking pretty good as well. 21 minutes and 28 minutes if you are traveling in from Floresville to downtown San Antonio. No problems there, but the problem is going to be right here off 37 at Pecan Valley. We'll see how this impacts that morning drive and give you those updates coming up in the next few minutes. Marks. Thank you, Stephen. Smashed cars and broken bones are the results of a major crash overnight. It involved four cars and shut down a busy highway flyover. The ramp from I-10 to Loop 410. Katrina Weber is there now with a live report. We know there were four cars involved, but of course it didn't under didn't start that way as we understand Katrina. Well, that's right. San Antonio police say that this was just a two car crash initially, but then before they knew it, before they could clear that up, four had been involved. Now, based on what officers told us, it doesn't appear that there were any major injuries, but they do say that one of the drivers in the initial crash suffered some broken bones. There also was a big mess. This happened around 2.30 this morning. Police say two cars first collided on I-10 at Loop 410. Then a third car came along and crashed into them. As officers were working to clear up all of that, a fourth car plowed into that crash scene. But because of the wreckage and all the mess that was on the highway, police did have to shut down that part of I-10 at 410. But again, it does appear that things are back to normal now. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Well, music filled the air at Hemisphere Park, downtown San Antonio last night to support the people of Ukraine. Members and supporters of the Ukraine San Antonio community put on a Hearts of Blue and Yellow benefit concert. There was an open stage to let anyone who wanted to share heartfelt songs, poems, and prayers. The concert's organizer and MC says the event was a way to come together and speak with Ukrainians who live in San Antonio to personally offer them support financially and emotionally. We had the chance to meet the people of Ukraine and get to know their stories. We had the chance to really tune in um, through music to, to celebrate them. And I think that speaks greatly to what's happening when we can all share our prayers and our energy um, in such a powerful way. All the proceeds from the concert will go toward efforts to send necessary supplies to those still in Ukraine. The increase in gas prices is causing those who rely on their vehicles to make a living to debate whether it's truly worth it. Some drivers for rideshare companies and food delivery apps like DoorDash, Lyft and Uber say it's honestly not even worth pulling out of the driveway. They say customers who are also feeling the pinch at the pumps are quickly adjusting to the increase in gas prices. Others are also cutting back by going out less, using public transportation and reducing food deliveries. Drivers say if gas prices continue to go up, they anticipate everything else will too. What scares me now, if, if gas stays like this, they're going to use that as, a, as an excuse to take everything else up because they're going to say it, it, you know, it costs that much to, more to put it on the truck and get it here. The gas price increase has already forced some drivers to quit. With fewer drivers, that means your next ride share or delivery charge will likely cost you more. Three educators from our area are tasked with a big job. They're now in a task force with the Texas Education Agency trying to figure out why there are not enough teachers. Those educators are Andrew Kim, Roland Toscano, and Diana Barrera Ugarte. The task force created to help better understand the staffing shortages in districts around the state and to address policy changes. The task force encompasses educators in public education across Texas from various backgrounds. Happening today, you can help give the gift of life by donating blood. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center is hosting a blood drive downtown today. 
It'll be at Omni La Mansión del Rio, located on 112 College Street from 9 a.m. to 2 o'clock this afternoon. Walk-ins are welcome, but avoid to avoid longer lines, you're urged to make an appointment online. You can do that by going to southtexasblood.org backslash give. As a thank you for donating, you can receive a Santico's Movie Pass and a Feeling Lucky t-shirt. April 18th is the day federal taxes are due, and if you haven't filed your taxes already, you may have to wait longer this year to get a refund. ABC's Morgan Norwood reports on what's causing delays this time and what you can do about it. The deadline for filing your taxes is just a few weeks away, and just like last year, taxpayers can expect more delays from the IRS this year. Believe it or not, the IRS is still working to file and process last year's returns. So they've got work from last year, as well as the new work for the 2021 tax season. There's also some labor shortages that they've had to work through due to COVID. So all of that is leading up to potential delays. So to speed up the process of getting your taxes done, there are some things that you can do. The number one tip is to file electronically. If you're still putting your return in an envelope, licking a stamp and sticking it in the mail, I'm sorry to tell you that your return probably will take an extra six to eight weeks. Another way to save time is to avoid making some of the most common mistakes, misspelling your name, entering an incorrect social security number, not including all your tax documents, and not signing your return. If you need help from the IRS, go online. Very important, don't try calling the IRS. They do have phone numbers, but I can tell you from experience, you're going to be on hold for a long time, and they're not as helpful, honestly, as you may think. And if you're getting a refund? The fastest way to get that money then is to make sure you have an online bank account set up so that the IRS can directly transfer your refund to that bank account. And just keep in mind that sometimes it takes about five days for the money to show up in your bank account. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Los Angeles. If you grew up with Sesame Street, some sad news to report this morning. The man who played Luis on the long running show has died. Emilio Delgado played Luis on Sesame Street for 45 years. Delgado's wife tells the Associated Press her husband died from the blood cancer myeloma. For almost 50 years, Delgado played an ordinary, non-stereotypical Latino character at a time when that was not always the case. He joined the cast in 1971 and was able to integrate Spanish terms into the script. Delgado died at his home in New York. He was 81 years old. Sad story there. Time right now, 541, 60 degrees. 2% of the population live in a, that live in a county that has a high COVID-19 community level. We'll explain what that means. And if your child is a fan of the Disney movie Encanto, listen up. One of the stars will be in San Antonio this weekend. We'll tell you when and where. Pretty cool. All right, outside with live cam, folks, the clock is ticking on the warm, mild air. A very powerful cold front is on the way today. We'll get an update on the timing with Mike Osterhage, and we'll check traffic with Stephen. Welcome back, 544 on your Friday morning. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says just 2% of the U.S. population now live in a county with a what they call high COVID-19 community level. The number translates roughly to 7 million people, 16 million fewer than last week. According to the CDC, almost 73% of our population now lives in a county considered to have a low community level. That's a good thing. Uh, the other 21% live in counties with medium community levels. And if you still need to get a COVID vaccine for yourself or for your kids, there is a free vaccination event kicking off at 10 o'clock this morning in Seguin. Seguin ISD and the Department of State Health Services Region 8 have partnered together for this free event that's taking place at the Seguin ISD Administration Building that's on East Kingsbury Street. Anyone ages five and up can receive a vaccine for free. No appointment is needed. And if you have had one vaccine shot already, Organizers are asking you to bring your first dose vaccine card. Consent forms will also be available. The event ends at 6 o'clock this evening. 545, 60 degrees for now. Adasa, the voice of Dolores from Encanto, is coming to San Antonio to meet with fans. The details of her visit are next. 
Welcome back, 548. This weekend, one of the actresses from the highly popular movie Encanto is scheduled to make an appearance here in San Antonio. Officials with Traders Village on the South Side say singer actress Adasa will be on hand tomorrow and Sunday. Adasa is the voice of Dolores Madrigal, one of the main characters of the Disney animated film. Fans can see Adasa tomorrow from 11 to 6 and on Sunday from 11 to 4.30. Her stage will be set up at Andy's Treasure Check, located at 15th and Avenue D inside Traders Village. Admission into the market is free and parking is $5 per vehicle. For more information, call Traders Village. Look, let me just say, that was great. What? Dolores Madrigal. Thank the you. pronunciation. I was working, I've, I've been coached. I mm -hmm. love it. Well, I've also been to San Antonio a while, so I think it's <laughs> worth the effort. You know what I mean? I love it. I love it. All right, let's get take a look with uh, traffic. Stephen, how are the roads looking out? Well, listen, as long as it's not Bruno, because you know we don't we talk don't. about Bruno. <laughs> you no, said no, it, Stephen no. Cavazos. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we do have to talk about this crash here. Unfortunately, 37 at Pecan Valley. You can see that we still have those flashing lights out there, and it looks like our first responder may be out from the shoulder lane right over here in the distance. So drivers, still very dark out this morning. So make sure you are driving carefully in this direction. Right there, 37 northbound at Pecan Valley Drive, not causing problems. Problems, but we're getting closer to that morning rush, so we'll see how that impacts the drive. 410 Southbound at Marbach Road. We still have a stall out there, and the trend continues a little bit further up on the northeast side, right here at I-35 northbound at Judson Road. But thankfully, as we drove around, you see the wider look at the map at 550. No big problems here, Mike. All right, put you on the spot. Oh, my no. last name in German. I'm pardon? German pronunciation of my last name. Ulster H. Ostahaga. Oh, okay. Right, Mark? I think I was pretty close. Yeah. It's, it's actually Scandinavian, Mike, but you go. <laughs> no, it's German. Ostahaga? Ostahaga. Anyway, it sounds like a dish at Ikea, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those meatballs would taste good. Okay, you're off topic hey, here. Uh, yeah, Spring Beauty there at Vahelia Ranch before winter strikes again, and it is right around the corner right now. We've got a lot of cloudy skies here. Don't let the current temperature when you walk outside fool you because it is definitely going to be changing. We have a few scattered showers around the area right now. Um, not much, obviously. Most of it's on the light side. Maybe a decent shower here and there. But uh, unfortunately, this is not really going to be anything that's uh, going to help out with the dry conditions that we have right now. A couple of them around Live Oak. We've had a few scattered ones in and around town. So just watch out for the roads to be on the, uh, the damp side this morning. All right, 61 in town. Bernie stage at 55. And Kerrville is now down to 42. And Comfort has also dropped down about uh, 6, 7, 8 degrees as that front is working its way on through here. And uh, temperatures are going to continue to drop down. As you saw out there, junction is 39, 32 in Ozona as of right now. And the wind is out of the northwest at 16 miles per hour. 15 in Fredericksburg, uh, 16 Kerrville, 13 junction. So wind chill temperatures right now, 34 in junction. That's what we're going to be expecting in the next couple of hours as that all pushes on through here. We do have a wind advisory that goes into effect at noon up until midnight. And wind's going to be gusting about 30, 35, 40 miles per hour. And with these temperatures dropping down and those winds, wind chills are going to be uh, right around, say, 30s, 20s. And that's going to be the situation all day long. Very biting wind chills around here. So you're definitely going to have to bundle up. And then we start to clear out somewhat and we'll really get cold, just plain old cold temperatures tomorrow morning and a good hard freeze is expected in the hill country. Couple of scattered showers around the area. There may be, as I call it, uh, sort of chunky rain. Uh, a little bit of uh, perhaps sleet or even a little bit of freezing rain popped in in, par in portions of the hill country this morning. Not gonna be a big deal at all. Precipitation gets on out of here by mid morning and then we start to or by midday, I should say, and then we start to clear out later on this afternoon. And with those clear skies, that's what's going to help to allow temperatures to really drop down. Speaking of dropping down, yes, temperatures are going to be dropping down later on this morning. So again, as the kids are heading out the door, make sure they have a coat with them because we're only going to be around 40 here in town, 30s in the hill country throughout the day. Temperatures will fluctuate a degree or two, but then we've got the wind to deal with. So you can subtract 10 to 15 off of that, and that's what it's going to feel like throughout the rest of today. And then we get down to 30 tomorrow morning rebound nicely good looking afternoons but cold mornings freezes both tomorrow as well as Sunday and then it's back to spring by uh, next week mid upper 70s low uh, 80s Mike I shouldn't have doubted you I found Osterhagen Germany it is between Dusseldorf and Berlin in the Black Forest isn't it uh, lower Saxony I, I don't know how close it is to Black Forest but definitely there all right that's probably where some of your relatives may be from they are
Osterhagen. 553, about 60 degrees. You're watching GMSA. We'll be right back. New species of fish adding color to the coral reefs of the Maldives. That's coming up next. Coming up here on GMA, we are live in the war zone this morning with the latest from Ukraine. Hundreds of thousands of civilians are trapped in Mariupol as Russia ramps up its attacks. You're going to see that and so much more coming up right here on GMA. Well, scientists have discovered a new colorful species of fish hiding on the coral reefs of the Maldives. Check this out. The new species belongs to the Rossi family. I think that's pronounced right. It consists of largely brightly colored fish. The scientific name honors the pink rose, the Maldivian national flower. Scientists say the colorful species can be found living anywhere from about 131 to 229 feet below the ocean's surface. It is a beautiful little fish. 557 right now ahead in the next hour. Cole High School looking to win back to back state championship titles. We have highlights of their win yesterday as they move one step closer. And we have new information about a deadly fire that happened on the west side this week. We'll explain when we come back. But first, a quick look at the road to a trans guide right now. We've got some flashing lights at I-37 and Pecan Valley. We'll have more on that coming up. And again, a reminder, today is another big cold front day. If you're headed out the door right now, take that jacket with you. You will thank Mike Osterhage later. We'll be right back. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It is Friday. It is March 11th. We've had a little taste of spring. That's going to go out the door. That sure is. Hours. Later on, we're going to be saying happy f f f Friday. Uh, Mike <laughs> Osterhage is here. It's going to be very cold in just a little bit. Let's get an update yep. on the progress of that latest cold front. And this is a uh, this is a hefty one, especially for this time of year, mm -hmm. because you know the the average last freeze is the 24th of February, so mm -hmm. we're well past that. Now the latest that's ever happened is the 3rd of April, so I don't think it's going to last that long. But we're looking to freezes this weekend, not today, uh, but portions of the hill country probably. And uh, yeah, the front's already through Kerrville. We've got some pretty good wind chills out there right now. So again, the advice this morning is, uh, if you're in town and you open up the door, it's like, ah, I don't need a coat. Yes, you do, because it's going to definitely change in the next couple of hours. We have a few showers out there, as you saw on the uh, live cam picture, that uh, 410 over by the airport may be damp. The roads are kind of damp. There hasn't been a lot of rain, just a few light showers that have been moving on through the area this morning. Um, it's not going to amount to anything, just uh, enough to make the roads kind of slippery in spots. Temperatures, 61 here in town, 55 Bernie stage, and then down to 41 now in Kerrville. Just about an hour ago, temperatures were in the mid and upper 50s in Kerrville. So we've dropped down a good 15 degrees or so as the front has moved on through. Wind chill temperature now is 34 up there in Kerrville, and 36 is the actual temperature injunction freezing in Ozona. So the cold air continues to push in here, and it looks like the front's going to be moving through in about the next hour or so here in town. We do have light amounts of allergens, but a bunch of them are still showing up. And temperatures by 7 o'clock will be down right around 50 degrees here in town uh, and obviously colder in parts of the hill country and will continue to drop down throughout the rest of the morning and about 40 or so throughout the day, maybe fluctuating a couple of degrees. But the big problem is the wind is going to be out of the north at 15 to 25 miles per hour and gusting at times close to 40. So we're going to have wind chills that are going to be well down in the low 30s and 20s throughout the rest of today. And we do have a wind advisory goes into effect at noon up until midnight for most all of the area. Then get ready. If you've already planted some plants, might want to cover them up tonight because we got a couple of freezes in store and definitely a hard freeze in the hill country. Details for the weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. All right, any big thing going on out there? Mike, I'm not sure what happened here, you know, and it's just a matter of moments. We had three crashes that just came in. Let's go ahead and get a look right now. 37 at Pecan Valley. This crash we told you about a little bit earlier this morning, still causing uh, first responders to be out there on the scene, so make sure you drive carefully, but not the only problem. Let's just go ahead and take you to the map because that crash picked up there in the northbound lanes at Pecan Valley. Hopefully, we'll be seeing that wrap up pretty soon, but again, as we drive up here a little bit further, I-10 eastbound at 
Loop 410, we have a second crash that was reported just minutes ago, but not the only problem. Unfortunately, as you drive up a little bit further here off I-35 northbound at Space Center Drive, we do have a third crash. So right now we are entering the 6 a.m. hour with problems already on the roadways and a few stalls still out there along 35 and 410. So you got to drive carefully this morning. These incidents aren't causing problems, though, if you are traveling into San Antonio from any of these communities. So a pleasant drive from Pleasanton on 37 northbound with 28 minutes, but watch out for that crash. 19 minutes if you're traveling eastbound from Highway 90 in Castroville and looks like little time from Lytle with 17 minutes on 35 northbound. So no problems there, but we have to watch these roads closely. Drivers, make sure you keep your eyes on the roads as well. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. And new this morning, we've learned the name of a man killed in a West Side fire Wednesday night. The medical examiner's office has identified the victim as 69-year-old Jesse Phillips Jr. The fire happened on Grove Hill Street, not far from Culebra Road and Ben Russ. Arson investigators say they haven't found anything suspicious, but they're still trying to figure out exactly what sparked that fire. And a man killed in a crash early yesterday morning has been identified as 29-year-old Arturo Sida. This happened around 2.30 a.m. yesterday near FM 78 and Lakeview Drive. That's close to Riddiman and North Foster Roads. Police say Sida was driving on the wrong side of the road and crashed into a sedan. The woman in that car was taken to the hospital but is expected to be okay. City of Castroville implementing stage one water restrictions. Residents only allowed to water before 11 a.m. or after 7 p.m. on their designated watering days. And that's determined by the last digit of your address. You can see the schedule there on your screen for Castroville. This is for irrigation systems and sprinklers. Watering with a handheld hose is still any uh, good any time of day. Top stories this morning, a gun used in a shooting on a charter bus visiting from a Dallas area school belonged to one of the players on the Kimball basketball team. That's according to the Dallas ISD superintendent. It's still unclear if the shooting was on purpose or accidental. The superintendent spoke with the UIL, which is allowing the team to remain in the state tournament. The girl that was shot was a student trainer on the team. The superintendent says she's out of surgery and is headed back to Dallas with her family. We have an update. Almost 90% of the homes and businesses in Seguin and McQueen have had their gas service restored. Thousands of people lost access to natural gas earlier this week. Yesterday, Centerpoint Energy crews went back to homes and businesses still without gas to reconnect lines. The energy company says another company damaged the gas line that disrupted the service. That gas line was fixed on Wednesday. Well, right now, 605 lawmakers avoiding a government shutdown by passing a massive funding bill yesterday evening and President Trump's former national security advisor pleading a fifth in the January 6th investigation. Plus, the U.S. taking more steps to stop Russia from attacking Ukraine. Jonathan Cotto joins us from the newsroom with a look at this morning's headline. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning, Mark. Well, that's right. The U.S., along with the G7 and European Union, are calling to revoke Russia's permanent normal trade relations. President Joe Biden plans to make the announcement to revoke the country's, quote, most favored nation status today. The move requires an act of Congress. The measures will be based on each country's national processes. Bipartisan talks in the Senate have been taking shape to take more aggressive action on Russia's trade status. It comes after the White House strongly wanted down the House passed bill banning the import of Russian oil, natural gas and coal into the U.S. And the Senate passed a massive government funding bill yesterday evening, a measure that includes $13.6 billion in aid to Ukraine. The $1.5 billion, trillion spending bill cleared the House Wednesday. It now heads to President Biden's desk for his signature. Government funding is set to expire today, and lawmakers have been racing to the clock to prevent a shutdown. The Senate also passed a stopgap measure to extend government funding through this coming Tuesday. That short-term funding extension gives congressional clerks time to process the larger bill before sending it to the president for his signature. And in other news, former Trump National Security Advisor Michael Flynn pled the fifth in an appearance before the January 6th committee yesterday. Flynn originally sued to block the committee's attempts to interview him and obtain his records, but lost that fight in court. General Flynn appeared before the committee virtually. As Flynn asserted his Fifth Amendment rights, committee staff implied that constituted an admission of guilt. Committee members have called on the Department of Justice to prosecute witnesses who refuse to cooperate with their investigation. In recent court filings, the January 6th committee has asserted it's investigating a criminal conspiracy. And those are this morning's headlines. Mark Alicia.
Thank you, Jonathan. Now to the rising cost of gas and what's to blame. Last night, President Joe Biden addressed the Democratic National Convention, saying he's taking the steps to address what he called Putin's price hikes at the pump. As ABC's M. Wynn reports, it comes amid another record-breaking inflation report. The soaring gas prices across America are now being paired with even higher inflation. It was just about a dollar and some change less, maybe about a week or two ago. Now they just shot right back up. It's outrageous. The average cost per gallon in the U.S. now $4.33, up 57 cents from just one week ago. On Capitol Hill, politicians are arguing over what's to blame. Republicans say it's a result of President Biden canceling the Keystone Pipeline project the president's team wants to pretend this lengthy problem only started two weeks ago. Independent Senator Angus King argues against those claims. No. Most of the oil going through the Keystone Pipeline was scheduled to be exported. Last night, President Biden delivering a speech to the Democratic National Committee, saying Russia's invasion of Ukraine is to blame. People are already, already feeling Putin's price hikes at the pump. We are increasing oil production with a record productivity by the end of the year. We will have produced more oil than any time in the last number of years. The record gas prices coming as the latest inflation report shows the cost of just about everything is still going up. The inflation rate for February reaching 7.9 percent. And while the White House says the current hike in gas prices should be short lived, experts say the ripple effect is already in motion. Is everything you buy off the, the shelf in a store, it got there either by plane, train or automobile. And so those higher costs in time will filter through even to uh, non-petroleum uh, or, or uh, energy-related items. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. Right now on KSAT.com, we have a list of where to find the least expensive gas here in San Antonio. We have a map that shows you those gas prices across the city. Also tips on how to get the best gas mileage. It's all on KSAT.com. Just click on this story. Time check right now, 6.09, about 60 degrees. The high school basketball season is almost coming to an end. Still ahead on GMSA, highlights from yesterday's semifinal games and who is moving on to the state championship. Plus, pop sockets aren't only good for holding your phone better, can now offer another helpful tool. Details when we come back. And taking a live look outside with live cam. Things look good right now. There are some spotted showers, but it's going to be cold, cold, cold later on today. We'll have more information coming up. Welcome back. Google is planning to send air raid alerts directly to Android phones across Ukraine. The company announced that it's working with Ukrainian with Ukrainian officials to launch the system to warn of incoming attacks. The Android pings will be based on official alerts sent by the government. Pop sockets have saved countless phones from falling out of your hands. Now it's offering another helpful tool. It can save you from a dead battery. The Pop Grip Jumpstart Lightning, that's uh, not exactly a catchy yeah, name, is it? Not at all. Uh, is a, a stick on spare battery that can revive your phone when you are on the run. Although you said it, it's not exactly compact, is it? No, that Looking. thing looks so bulky. All right, Nintendo, it will open its first theme park in the U.S. next year. Super Nintendo World will feature a ride and interactive area based on Super Mario video game. A similar park already exists in Japan. This one here will be part of Universal Studios in Hollywood, and I want to go. Yeah, it looks kind of cool. All right, 614, it has turned into a very busy morning on the roads. Here's Stephen with a live update. Unfortunately, we do have our hands full over here in the traffic lab. We're taking a look at 35 at Ritterman. This is a crash that came in a little bit earlier this morning, and you can already see from this shot, we're getting a lot more folks out there. Uh, we're inching closer to that morning rush, so make sure you're driving carefully because it did shape up. It does shape up. Uh, looks like we're going to have a busy start. Let's go ahead and start here, though. I-10 eastbound at Loop 410. This is a separate crash that came in. The one we showed you off of 37 looks like it has finally cleared, but we are starting to see more of these issues popping up. Let's go ahead and drive up here to 35 northbound at Space Center Drive where we have that second crash as you just saw on those trans guide cameras. We are seeing more people out on the roadway, so you got to be careful and a new one popped up just moments ago over here on the northwest side 1604 eastbound right there at Tradesman Road and I can expect uh, tell you right now if the morning does shape up like this, we'll start to see a lot more congestion building in these lanes with thankfully uh, we are still seeing a lot green, a lot of green on here, so no uh, delays just yet, but drivers you got to be careful out there this morning. It's not shaping up to look like a nice way to start the weekend guys.
Thank you, Stephen. All right, Mike's here with a look at our forecast. Where do you want to begin this morning, Mike? Uh, with the advice that we've been giving people all morning long, even though you step outside and you're like, eh, I don't need a coat. Yes, you do, because uh, things are definitely going to be changing throughout the course of the morning, and it's just going to be cold and blustery all day long. Uh, this morning, in the next uh, hour or so here in town, 50 degrees, the wind is going to be shifting around, and yeah, wind chills are going to definitely be something that are going to get your attention at. Later on this afternoon, right around the low 40s, upper 30s depending on where you are and again that doesn't even take into account the wind so subtract about a good 10 maybe 15 degrees off of temperatures and that's what it's going to feel like all right we have another beautiful picture of the waxing gibbous moon and for the past couple of days somebody is just going after my heart with some great puns and dad jokes so this one is never have the stakes been so high as when the cow jumped over the moon are, are you Thank remembering you. these? Because I know you're going to bring them up. Uh, you Probably. know, add them to your repertoire. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah. But I like that though. Thank you very much for the Casey <laughs> Connect picture and the great pun this morning. Uh, lots of clouds out there right now, and again, it's very mild. We do have a couple of showers. The roads, um, you know, it, it's been kind of some rain off and on this morning. A few more decent showers over here on the uh, northwest side, heading in toward, uh, say, Bernie, and then up around Sisterdale, Bandera. You know better than just the light stuff, but most of it is very, very light. I've uh, got a couple little sprinkles here in, in and around town, but just assume that the roads are going to be damp this morning because we have had a couple of those uh, sprinkles in the past few hours. Down to 45 now in Comfort, 41 in Kerrville, and that cold air continues to work its way down to the southeast. 36 right now in Junction 32, Ozona. Then factor in the wind, which it, definitely that's going to be something that gets your attention throughout the day. But wind chills right now, 34 in Kerrville, 32 in Kerrville. It feels like 27 in Junction. So just wait because that's coming down here. And we do have a wind advisory. goes into effect at noon up until midnight. Winds are going to be gusting about uh, 30, 35, 40 miles per hour. And wind chill forecast, we're going to be down in the 30s, 20s throughout most of the area and even some teens later on today with those brutally cold wind chill temperatures and as far as the next couple of mornings we're looking at freezes but then getting up into the 60s so it's going to be a cold start nice big warm up plenty of sunshine and then it's going to be spring going into uh, next week and the nice thing is too we'll start to see the humidity going up somewhat by monday then we get another front moving on through here but as you saw it's not going to do that much with temperatures but it will trim some of the humidity so should be fairly comfortable next week downside other than those couple of showers this morning, no rain in the forecast. 40 at noon, windy. It's going to feel like it's in the upper 20s, and we'll stay right around 40, low 40s here in town, some 30s in the hill country. Again, windy conditions. Then tomorrow, we're going to be down to 30 here in town. A good hard freeze in the hill country. Same thing on Sunday, freezing temperatures. And like I said, beautiful in the afternoon. 60 tomorrow, 67 on Sunday. And then it's just back to spring. Perfect excuse to sleep in. Tomorrow? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, many days is a good day for that, but yeah, and uh, today, bundle up. Again, emphasize, grab a coat. We're ready, or we shall be, or we should be. Five, uh, 619, rather, about 60 degrees. Major League Baseball is back, and we'll have the latest on the lockout coming up next in sports. There's a different way to treat HIV. It's every other month injectable Cabinuva. For adults who are undetectable, Cabinuva is the only complete HIV treatment you can get every other month. Cabinuva helps keep me undetectable. It's two injections given by my healthcare provider every other month. It's one less thing to think about while traveling. HIV pills aren't on my mind. A quick change in my plans is no big deal. Don't receive Cabinuva if you're allergic to its ingredients or taking certain medicines which may interact with Cabinuva. Serious side effects include allergic reactions, post-injection reactions, liver problems, and depression. If you have a rash and other allergic reaction symptoms, stop Cabinuva and get medical help right away. Tell your doctor if you have liver problems or mental health concerns, and if you are pregnant, breastfeeding, or considering pregnancy. Some of the most common side effects include injection site reactions, fever, and tiredness. If you switch to Cabinuva, attend all treatment appointments. Every other month, and I'm good to go. Ask your doctor about every other month Cabinuva. In this morning's GMA First Look, putting the pressure on even more Russian oligarchs. Operations at one of the most famous soccer clubs in the world, Chelsea, blocked. The club can't sell new tickets, merchandise, or even buy and sell players. 
The reason? It's owned by this man, Roman Abramovich, currently worth more than $12 billion. The UK government sanctioning him, calling him a prominent Russian businessman and pro-Kremlin oligarch who has a close relationship with Putin, something he denies. London is host to so much Russian wealth. So for the UK, even to take any steps towards sanctioning Russian oligarchs is really uh, a case of biting the hand that feeds them. And we'll have much more on the hunt for oligarch wealth coming up at 7 a.m., plus the very latest on the ground reporting from Ukraine. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Let's talk high school basketball playoffs. Cole Cougars looking to become back-to-back state champs, but they had to get by Hitchcock in the Class 3A st- state semifinals first. Cougars couldn't get off to a better start. Silas Livingston had that corner three to help Cole jump out to a 15-0 lead. Trey Blackmore docking and knocking down another three, three and it's 19-5 after one. Dre Ray spins baseline up. Cougars are up 28-13 at the half. Third quarter, Ray drops the hammer on a play, and he drives down the lane, throws down a monster jam over two defenders. Cole up nine going into the fourth. Bulldogs got close in the fourth, but the Cougars hit their free throws down the stretch, and they punched their ticket to the state championship game tomorrow. Final score, 53-49. Came out fast, came out um, getting up, you know, shooting, shooting really well. Um, and after that, uh, you know, teams are going to get runs throughout the um, game. So, I mean, we just, know, we just had to know how to uh, battle back. I think the experience that we had in the past has helped us a lot. You know, just playing in big games and big atmosphere, I felt like having that experience really helped us stay together and compose as a team. All right, good luck, Cole. Bernie Champion, Chargers also looking for a trip to state finals, Class 5A, but it would be a tough battle against Mansfield. Timberview, Chargers set the tone early, causing a turnover, scooping up the loose ball, taking it all the way back. Champion up 13-11 after one. Outside shooting gets going in the second, but Timberview takes the lead 28-25 right before the half, and the Chargers unfortunately fall 55-43. So one more state semifinals game today, also from Bernie. These are the Greyhounds hoping to make it to the big game with a win over Wichita falls that game is set to tip off at three o'clock today then tomorrow cole faces dallas madison in a tough matchup in 3a state title game 10 a.m of course we'll keep you updated on air and online good luck to all our local teams well switching to baseball now the major league baseball season is back on the very last minute they're going to have a full 162 game schedule after the lockout ended in dramatic fashion yesterday with a new collective bargaining agreement the owners have already ratified it. Spring training will start Sunday, and opening day is going to happen quick, very quick, April the 7th. Fingers crossed, Spurs fans. Spurs hoping tonight will be the night that Coach Greg Popovich will become the all-time winningest coach in NBA history. But they have to do it uh, to do it. Rather, they have to get in one over the Utah Jazz first. Tip off set for 7:30 tonight over at the AT&T Center. Maybe tonight is the night. You know, you mentioned it yesterday. If it happens here in San Antonio, how special is that? But nonetheless, a huge accomplishment. I agree. 626, about 60 degrees. You've probably heard of Shiner Beer, but you may not know the name behind it. Still ahead on GMSA, we'll take you to Shiner and tell you about the woman known for keeping the iconic Texas brewery alive. After the break, we're learning about a multi-vehicle crash on the northwest side early this morning that closed down a major freeway ramp. We'll be right back. Let's take a live look outside at the roads with TransGuide. I-35 Rittiman, things look like they're moving smoothly. Give yourself extra time to travel to work today. We'll be right back. San Antonio police investigating a two-car crash ended up with an even bigger problem on their hands. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. It shut down this part of the highway for a while. I'll tell you more about it. New images out of Ukraine show Russian forces closing in on the capital, Kyiv. The latest developments coming up. All right, real quick, take a look at your screen. at 60 degrees out at the airport, but look at the other side of your screen. Cold front moving in, all capital letters. Doesn't get any more simple than that. We'll talk to Mike in a moment. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday. It is March 11th. And we're not going to just be dealing with a cold. It's going to be windy out there. So it, hold on to your hat. Yeah, absolutely. Great advice. Mike Ostridge is here with more on what to expect and uh, the timing of this front. Okay, uh, from the airport or, you know, say the northwest side of town around yeah. 410, 10, up to Bernie is what? Five miles maybe? Six miles? 
Okay. Roughly. Uh, Sounds about right. Yeah, uh, about 15 degrees, 16 degrees colder now in Oh, it's Princeton. happening right now. Yeah, it's happening right now. Yeah, the front's moving on through. So, yeah, just get ready. Uh, the roads are damp over there by 410. We've had a couple of light little showers around this morning, and we'll still uh, keep a few of them around throughout the rest of the morning. As we're talking about 61 right now, wind is out of the uh, northeast, about six miles per hour. Dew point still fairly high. Again, you step outside, and it's like, okay, it's kind of mild out there. But, again, the big story this morning is take a coat. Here's what's going on as far as radar. We do just have a few of these light uh, scattered sprinkly showers. They will be sticking around for the, uh, the rest of the morning hours. A couple of more in parts of the hill country and even around Canyon Lake, a decent shower up there, but that's the exception rather than the rule. Nothing is really showing up on radar. A couple of them by Live Oak, maybe. Um, but, you know, we've had those few little sprinkly showers. This is the big story, though. Temperatures 46 Bernie stage. Comfort's now down to 42. Kerrville is down to 39. In Kerrville, it has dropped about 20 degrees over the course of roughly an hour and a half to two hours as that front has moved on through here. And that cold air continues to barrel on in. Wind chill temperatures, 31 in Kerrville right now, 42 Bernie stage. And it gets even colder out to the northwest. So all of that continues to push on in here throughout the course of the morning. Everything is on the low side, a bunch of allergens out there. Of course, the updated count is going to be coming out in about, um, say, 45 minutes to an hour. So cold front moves on through. A couple of light little showers around here. Very windy, as Alicia was uh, referring to. So it's going to stay that way all day long. Cloudy, windy. Temperatures will be about 40, give or take, and then subtract roughly 10 to 15 degrees off of that for the wind chill temperatures this weekend freezes tomorrow and Sunday. Good hard freeze in the hill country, but sunny in 60s in the afternoon. So good looking weekend. Then spring returns next week, sunny and warmer. We're looking at mid to upper 70s, some low 80s. Wind advisory goes into effect at noon up until midnight, so it's going to be blustery all day and all evening. More on the weekend forecast coming up. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, big problems? Yeah, I would say so, Mike. Unfortunately, we've entered the 6 a.m. hour and getting closer to morning rush with a few issues out there. Let's get a look right now. I-10 at West Avenue is the latest shot from Transguy that shows flashing lights. We're seeing a lot of this, uh, these types of situations uh, this morning, a few crashes. Let's go ahead and take you to the map, but we're going to start right over here on the northwest side. Loop 1604 westbound right there at Tradesman Drive. We do have a crash that was reported it's not causing issues just yet, but you can expect to see some folks out there in the next few minutes and we can expect to see some delays. Let's go ahead and drive down here. That crash you just saw on trans guide is picked up in the westbound lanes right there at West Avenue. Not the only problem. The trend continues as we drive over here off I-35 northbound right there at Space Center Drive. We told you about that crash a little bit earlier this morning and as we drive down over here, I-10 eastbound at Loop 410. Let's go ahead and push out of the map 634 bird's eye view. It's yikes, not seeing a lot of those red icons that are popping up, indicating some issues out there on the roads, as well as those yellow icons, which show some stalls out there. So make sure you check your vehicles and watch out for first responders. Some good news, though, if you are going to be traveling into San Antonio from any of our neighboring communities, neighbors, no delays just yet. It's still uh, pretty much green across the board. Just remember to take it easy this morning, but we're going to watch the roads closely. Again, I-10 West Avenue is the latest crash we're going to add to our map. We'll give you all those updates coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Alicia. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police say they had double trouble on their hands. A crash scene that involved two cars suddenly growing to involve four. It happened overnight at the base of a busy highway flyover. Katrina Weber is there near 410 and I-10 with a live report. Katrina, good morning. Were there any serious injuries? Well, good morning. Uh, police did tell us that one man had some broken bones, but it didn't sound like anyone else was hurt. Now, there were some smashed cars, four of them to be exact. Police tell us that the initial crash happened around 2.30 this morning. It involved two cars on I-10 near Loop 410. Moments later, they say a third car crashed into that crash scene. Then before police could clear that mess, a fourth car plowed into it. They had to shut down that area of the highway for a while while they investigated and then cleared everything up. Unfortunately, it appears that the area is open now. Uh, no signs of that earlier crash as people head out for this morning commute. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Top stories this morning. A man has been arrested in connection to the deadly shooting of a toddler that happened last month. According to the U.S. Attorney's Office, two-year-old Jules Gonzalez shot herself with a gun allegedly owned by 32-year-old Christopher Ramirez. 
Ramirez was the boyfriend of the child's mother, and when authorities searched his home, they say a duffel bag with a handgun was found. Ramirez is a convicted felon and is not allowed to own a firearm. If he is convicted in the fatal shooting, he faces up to 10 years in prison. And Russian troops close in on the Ukrainian capital of Kyiv, pushing three miles closer despite stiff resistance from Ukrainian fighters. Across the country, Russian forces stepping up their attacks, though U.S. officials say their progress is still slower than expected. As ABC's M. Wen reports, this comes as President Biden prepares to put more economic pressure on Russia. Good morning. As the war presses on, some civilians in Ukraine have been able to escape besieged cities into neighboring countries, but others remain trapped. This morning, Russian troops inching closer to the capital, Kyiv. Now roughly nine miles away from city center. New video released by the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense shows Russian forces ambushed as they drive towards the outskirts of Kyiv. Thursday, around 60,000 civilians fled Ukraine through humanitarian corridors. But evacuation routes in Mariupol remained blocked. Ukrainian President Zelensky accusing Russia of not allowing those civilians to be saved, saying they have a clear order to hold Mariupol hostage to torture it. Already more than 2.3 million people have fled the country. In Poland, Vice President Harris embracing calls for an international war crimes investigation of Russia. We have been witnessing atrocities of unimaginable proportion. President Biden set to deliver remarks today calling for the U.S. along with the G7 and European Union to strip Russia of its most favored nation trading status, essentially ending normal trade relations. Top U.S. intelligence officials are warning that Russia's false claims of chemical weapons in Ukraine could be used as an excuse for their own attack using bioweapons. The White House would not say how the U.S. would react if Russia ultimately did use them. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. Well, people here in San Antonio are always ready to help those in need. Last night, a benefit concert was held at Hemisphere Park downtown to raise money for the people of Ukraine. Jonathan Cotto joins us again from the newsroom with this story. Jonathan, good morning. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning, Mark. And that's right. If you were near or around Hemisphere Park last night, your ears may have been filled with the beautiful sounds of live music and all for a good cause. Members of and supporters of the Ukraine San Antonio community put on the hearts and of blue and yellow benefit concert. There was an open stage to let anyone who wanted to share heartfelt songs, poems and prayers. We spoke with a woman from Ukraine. This is what she shared. I'm very happy to see so much support from Americans as well and from the whole San Antonio. The concert's organizer and MC says the event was a way to come together and speak with Ukrainians who live in San Antonio to personally offer them the support financially and emotionally. Mark, Alicia. Thank you, Jonathan. Right now, 639, about 59 degrees. And here's a look at what's coming up next right here on GMSA. Texans wouldn't be able to enjoy their favorite beer today if it wasn't for one woman. I'm Sarah Costa coming up on GMSA. We tell you the story of Miss Seely and how she saved Shiner Beer. 642, the famous Texas beer Shiner made at Spetzel Brewery in Shiner, Texas, almost ceased to exist in the 1920s if it had not been for one woman. Miss Seely, the daughter of Cosmo Spetzel, the creator of Shiner Beer, didn't just keep the iconic Texas brewery alive, but also owned it and ran it in the 50s and 60s. Sarah Costa visited the brewery to learn about Miss Seely's incredible story for Women's History Month. The iconic Texas beer created at Spetzel Brewery since 1909 in Shiner, Texas, about an hour and a half east of San Antonio, was founded by Cosmos Spetzel. Even though Cosmos was the creator of the brew and set the tone of the importance of tradition and family at the brewery, it was his daughter, known as Miss Seely, who kept the Texas Shiner tradition strong. In the 1920s, Cosmos faced the hardships of prohibition. His wife also died. He felt defeated and decided to sell the brewery. But his then young daughter stepped in and convinced her father not to. She saw this brewery as her father. It was her father. And she did it for him, ultimately. She wanted to keep it going because it was him. Tyson Kopasinski with Shiner tells us Miss Seeley's story. She credits her for also saving the town of Shiner. Without the brewery, there's not a lot of places to go. So it definitely 
save this town. When Cosmos died in 1950, Miss Seely stepped in as the owner, where she ran the brewery until the late 1960s. During her time as owner, Shiner Premium was a flagship beer and Shiner Bach was only seasonal. The original Shiner beer, Shiner Premium, was created by Miss Seely's father and it was also her favorite beer. It's pretty good. Everyone loved her. She was kind-hearted. She had a heart of gold. She wasn't just beloved by the employees in the town, but she was also breaking down barriers as a woman owning and running a brewery, an anomaly then and even now. There's only less than 3% of craft breweries are solely owned by a female. Only 3% in the U.S. And at the time, she was the only one. Vasily died in 1977. Shiner has been owned by several people since. None of them have been a woman since Miss Seeley. Tyson's advice for women who want to break into the brewery game like Miss Seeley, don't ever give up. Set your mind with what you want to do and do it. And that's what she did. She just wanted to make this place run. She wanted to keep it alive. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. And don't forget the brewery is open for tours almost every single day. It's on about an hour and a half from San Antonio over to Shiner. And a special good morning to everybody watching from Shiner this morning. I hope to visit one day. Me too. Me too. Going to have to make the trip. 645, Stephen. And make sure that you do make uh, plans ahead before you raise a glass, right? So uh, right now we are seeing some issues out there. I-10 at West Avenue, still the same problems that are plaguing the roadways, but thankfully not seeing any issues with traffic that's building up in that direction. Morning rush is here, but it doesn't look like this crash is causing any particular problems for drivers. Still watching this one, though, off 1604 westbound at Tradesman Drive. It should say drive, but let's go ahead and drive down over here to I-10 westbound at West Avenue, where you just saw those trans guide cameras. Hopefully we'll be seeing some resolution pretty soon, but as we get that bird's eye view of the map 646 we are in morning rush so a few of these crashes that you're seeing right here looks like Texas has cleared those out we'll make sure we clear them from our map as well but essentially we're entering morning rush now with some smooth roadways no delays just yet but just remember to buckle up be safe we're going to have more updates coming up in the next few moments guys thank you Stephen. welcome all right, now Hi. for the weather. I always love pictures like this. This is not what we're going to be seeing at all today. So this is from a couple of days ago with those beautiful blue skies out there. And oh, it's always beautiful to see old glory and waiting <laughs> in the wind there. Thank you very much for that picture. You see what Good she night. caught there on the screen there at the bottom, Mike? Right there, yeah. the, uh, the moon, which oh. is the waxing gibbous. So it's going to be full on the 18th. And of course, thank you very much for that Good picture. Eye. All right, lots of clouds out there and maybe a bit of a sheen on the road. We've had a few sprinkly showers here in town. You can see there's a couple of them, primarily in portions of the hill country, a decent uh, decent shower here or there in eastern Medina County, those uh, yellow spots, but those are kind of few and far between. We'll continue to see some of these light little sprinkly showers throughout the rest of the morning. And again, here in town, uh, we've had a few of them earlier this morning that uh, the latest one moving through Converse and Live Oak and then over there on the uh, west side of town over by Helotus and 1604 over there. So 61 in town. And and then Balverde's now down to 52, 45 Bernie stage, 38 Kerrville. Temperatures have been dropping down about 15, 20 degrees over the course of the past couple of hours as that front moved on through here. Wind is starting to shift around. Kerrville has sustained winds 20 miles per hour. And then we have gusts on top of that up to 24. Same thing at Balverde. It's going to be very gusty and blustery all day long. And wind chill temperatures right now. It feels like 28 degrees in Kerrville. 40 Bernie stage. Take a coat because that's what it's going to feel like around here throughout most of the area all day long. We do have wind advisory goes into effect at noon up until midnight. Blustery winds uh, about 35 40 mile per hour wind gusts. There is the chance to see perhaps a little bit of mixed precipitation, very, very scattered around out in northern portions of the hill country. More of a gee whiz thing than, than anything else. Uh, it's not going to amount to anything. And then precipitation is going to continue to move on out of here. So primarily just in the morning, and then we'll have cloudy skies throughout most of the day. We start to clear out, though, later on this evening, and that's then going to help to allow temperatures to really drop down. Now, as far as wind chills today, it's going to be down in the 30s, 20s, even teens and portions of the hill country pretty much all day long. It is going to be a blustery and cold day today, and that's going to be the situation going into the overnight hours as well. So here's what's going on right now with the upper level winds. We've had this southwesterly flow going on here, and that's what has helped to keep us kind of on the milder side, especially yesterday. Then 
this little disturbance is moving on through. This is what's pulling the front on through here. It's not really anything big as far as rain is concerned. Unfortunately, we get the cold temperatures to start off tomorrow and Sunday freezes and then up to the 60s. Then we shift back around to uh, well, there's another disturbance tries to come through on Monday. It's not going to do much of anything really. A couple of clouds it looks like as of right now and then throughout most of next week we have this pretty much a zonal uh, pattern in the atmosphere and with a little bit of a southwesterly flavor to it, which just means temperatures are going to be at or now above normal for next week. So instead of low 70s, it's going to be mid to upper 70s. Today, we're on the opposite side of normal. 40 at noon, windy conditions. Again, winds are going to be gusting about uh, 35, close to 40 miles per hour at times. 42 for high temperature, but the wind chill is going to be down in the 20s. We hit freezing tomorrow morning. We hit freezing Sunday morning. Up into the uh, 60s, though, during the day. Good looking days tomorrow. Just want to keep a coat handy and, of course, set your clocks ahead one hour before you go to bed tomorrow night. Wow. Yeah. We've been talking about all week and a lot of us still are not prepared for this time change. No. All I'm picturing right now is some soup, a grilled cheese for the kids. Yes, yes, yes. I yes. was. It's the first thing I thought of this morning when I was remembering this cold front he was talking. What kind of soup? A tomato basil. Yeah. Or broccoli cheddar. Oh, yeah. There you go. I'm ready. <laughs> for time's it ready? <laughs> I'm, for some reason, I'm craving French onion soup. I've never had French today. onion. Oh, that's really good. Either way. Yep. I'm pot roast today. Pot roast. Mm. Which one? Clam clearly. Chowder. Clam chowder? Clam chowder. Okay. It's clearly, we're hungry. Some of you get this man some chowder. Right now, <laughs> 650, about 40, uh, rather 59 degrees. Going to be 49 soon, though. I promise. Not quite yet, but taking a live look outside. Things look good this morning so far. We'll be back with more information coming up. Coming up here on GMA, we are live in the war zone this morning with the latest from Ukraine. Hundreds of thousands of civilians are trapped in Mariupol as Russia ramps up its attacks. You're going to see that and so much more coming up right here on GMA. Four smashed cars and several broken bones are what San Antonio police found on this highway overnight. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. They say that this actually started out as a smaller problem here at Loop 410 and Interstate 10. The police got the call around 2.30 this morning. When they initially arrived, they were working just a two-car crash. They say one of the drivers involved had suffered some broken bones. But before they knew it, police say a third car had crashed into that crash scene. Then, as they were working to clear all of that, a fourth car plowed into those cars. But based on what officers say, it did not appear that there were any other injuries, but of course it was a big mess and police did have to shut down uh, that on-ramp from I-10 to Loop 410 for a while, but it looks like things are back to normal now. Reporting on the Northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, let's check traffic at 5 till. 16 to 4 tradesmen, still a problem spot. Mark Alicia, let's get a closer look at Trans Guide. You can see that this crash happened over on the left lane, according to this overhead sign. So, drivers, make sure you're driving carefully through that spot. We're picking it up in the westbound lanes of 16 to 4 right there at Tradesman Drive. Again, that should say drive, but make sure you are driving carefully this morning. Let's get that wide look at the map. 655, no real issues to report just yet, but we'll see how the morning shapes up. We'll continue to watch this crash closely. Mike? All right, we're looking off to the northwest, and just beyond our field of vision is that uh, front that's moving through the northwest portion of Bear County. We've got a couple of uh, showers that are now popping up a little bit more out in the uh, northwest part of Bear County. Just some scattered ones around throughout the rest of the morning. 45 Bernie stage. We're down to 60 right now here in town. Balverde has dropped to 50 and upper 30s in Kerrville, and then wind chills on top of that. Feels like 28 right now in Kerrville. Going to be windy all day long. Temperatures aren't going anywhere today. All right, good luck to our Spurs tonight, Coach. Pop, we hope tonight yeah. is your night. Fingers crossed. Y'all have a great weekend and stay warm. We'll see you back here at 9. Good Morning America is next.